God's word for us. Thank you. The reading is taken from Genesis chapter 4, reading verses 1 to 16. Before we read, let me pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word to instruct and guide us in all truth. We pray that you would be with Mark as he preaches and prepare our hearts to hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favour. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were there in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. You are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Great, thanks guys. Good morning everyone. We are in those opening chapters of the Bible, aren't we? We're in those chapters that explain why the world is the way it is. And a couple of weeks ago we heard about Adam and Eve and how they turned away from God and went their own way and ate the fruit from the tree and God made them go their own way. God made them leave the perfect Garden of Eden. So the question is, what is life going to be like in this world where people have turned away from God? And I'm afraid the answer is things get pretty bad pretty quickly, don't they? It's not a very nice story, this one. It's not a very PC story, but it is a really important one. So it begins, doesn't it, with two sons. Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And that is a good start because it means that God hasn't given up on the human race. Yeah, God's still got plans for mankind. Here are two new men. But, even better, they decide to worship God. That's a good start, isn't it? So, they do what you did in those days and they bring offerings to God. God. So Cain brought some of the fruits of the field and Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn animals of his flock. He brought the most precious things he had. This is the most precious thing in our freezer. He brought the most precious thing he had. Kevin doesn't know I took this. Uh, <laughs> he brought the most precious thing 
to God. You see, Cain wanted to worship God Cain's way, and Abel wanted to worship God God's way. And that was what made all the difference. And so, of course, God was very pleased with, Cain, with, with Abel. Get it right? But he wasn't pleased with Cain. And this made Cain really, really angry. In fact, it was written all over his face. And he wasn't just angry with God for being God. Cain was actually angry with Abel. Because Abel was a living, breathing reminder that Cain was wrong. He was a reminder of what Cain should be doing. Now you know what that's like, right? Maybe you've done something wrong and that's bad enough. But then, next to you, there's your brother or your sister or your classmate and they're doing the right thing and loving it. And it shows you up, doesn't it? And you really hate them for it. Well, Cain just wanted never to have to look at his brother again. But God knew what Cain was thinking and God was very patient. He gave Cain a warning. He said, Cain, if you do what is right, you will be accepted. But listen, sin is crouching at your door. God said to Cain, sin is like a monster waiting for you and you can't play around with it. It wants to rule over you. God said, you've got to rule over it. You've got to not let it in. But you know what? Cain wouldn't listen to the warning. He wanted to let the monster in. So he turned to his brother and he said, Hey, shall we go out to the fields? Sure. And they went out to the fields. And when Cain thought no one was looking... He killed his brother. He killed his brother. Of course, he thought no one could see. God said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? See, he wasn't sorry at all, was he? He was trying to be clever. But God said something really striking. He said to Cain, Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now, God didn't mean that the ground was literally shouting. But it was like Abel's death was making a voice ringing in God's ears. A voice shouting out justice. Maybe that's what it sounded like. There's a voice shouting to God, you've got to do something about this. And God did something. God said to Cain, you are under a curse. You will become a restless wanderer on the earth and you will have to leave this place and wherever you go, the ground will be hard and your work will be harder. I mean, God was pretty merciful not to kill Cain straight off, if you ask me. I mean, what a horrible man. Do you see how things are getting worse and worse? Last week we heard about Adam and Eve. Well, Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the tree. That was bad enough. But Cain killed his own brother. Adam and Eve had the snake come in and tempt them from outside. But with Cain, God said, sin is right at the door. Somehow, sin has got right with us, almost on top of us. Adam and Eve were deceived, if you like, but Cain knew exactly what he was doing. He heard the warning, and he ignored it, and he actually planned the whole thing out anyway. God said to Adam and Eve, what have you done? Adam and Eve, they were scared. They admitted what they'd done to God. God asked Cain the same question. He was like, I don't know. Don't look at me. He wouldn't admit anything, would he? And Adam and Eve got the ground placed under a curse, but Cain got himself placed 
under a curse. Do you see how things are getting worse and worse already? It's like a downward spiral, isn't it? Every time the same pattern goes round, it gets worse and worse. And this is the world we live in. This is a world where if God doesn't step in, we just spiral away and away and away from God. This is a world where pride leads to selfishness, leads to anger, leads to hatred, leads to murder, leads to revenge, leads to war, until you have two nuclear-armed countries staring down the barrel of a gun at each other because no one knows how to take a step backwards and no one can get off the spiral. And we know what that's like in our own lives too, don't we? You know, you tell one lie to cover up what you've done and then you have to tell more and more lies to keep the secret. Or you're in an argument and you lose your temper and that makes the argument worse and down and down it goes. And this is a world where actually we all let the monster in. And now we can't make it leave. Genesis is really, really honest about the world we live in. I mean, sure, there's still plenty of good in the world. Abel was a good man, but you see what happened to him. And we're only in chapter 4. Well, thankfully, chapter 4 is not the end of the story. We're going to sing now about the one who came to die for a better reason. So as the band get to their places, perhaps we could get to our feet and sing See Him in Jerusalem. Yeah. 
Please do take a seat. And let's carry on. I, I wonder if you noticed what the biggest problem was in Genesis 4, okay? It wasn't just the fact that we sin and that we make the world worse and worse. It was the fact that God has to do something about it. You remember what God said to Cain? Abel's death means it's like there's a voice shouting out to me, shouting out for justice. We want justice! Yeah, we want justice. That's a good thing, right? That God always hears the cries of the suffering. But his justice is a fearful thing. So when God said to Cain, you're going to have to leave and become a restless wanderer on the earth, Cain said, This punishment is more than I can bear. I will be hidden from you and whoever finds me will kill me. Oh, Cain was worried, wasn't he, that someone would attack him because of what he'd done to Abel. He still wasn't sorry, but he was scared. And God said to Cain, that won't happen. In fact, if anyone attacks Cain, the same thing will happen to them. And God put a mark on Cain to show people that they mustn't kill him. Now, don't worry, I'm not actually going to do anything with this because we don't know what the mark was, okay? But the mark was God's way of saying to the world, this man is under my protection. Don't hurt him. I know he's a murderer, but don't hurt him. That is pretty radical. That is amazing that God would do something like that for a murderer. So off Cain goes into wandering but of course the voice is still shouting out isn't it we want justice we want justice we want justice and i wonder if sometimes we hear that voice ourselves because we are a bit like cain aren't we i'm not saying that we all go around murdering each other but we do try and come to god on our own terms and not on his terms don't we and we do get jealous and angry when other people do the godly thing and it shows us up. And we do think to ourselves, oh, it would just be so much easier if that other person just wasn't there. And like with Cain, the world is full of evidence against us. You know, we leave a trail, don't we? A trail of memories and bank statements and computer logs and texts and emails and faded photographs and other people's tears and we, we can't rub it out. You know that, that little button mark delete history? It doesn't actually do what it says, does it? Well, this chapter shows us that God always sees, he always hears, he always needs to do something about evil. But, but, much later on, God found a way to be even kinder than he was to Cain because Adam and Eve had a third son. And from son number three was descended Jesus. And just like Abel... Jesus was a good man who always did the right thing for God. And it got Abel killed, and it got Jesus killed. And Abel's blood soaked into the dust, and Jesus did the same. But when Abel died, there was that voice, wasn't there, shouting for justice. We want justice! We want justice! We want justice! Get this. Jesus' death 
made a different voice start shouting in God's ears. A voice shouting instead, Justice has been done. The New Testament says, as we've heard, to Christians. Christians, you have come to the sprinkled blood of Jesus and it speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Jesus' blood shouts forgiveness. So Christian, if you believe in Jesus, you don't need to be scared of that old voice. That voice shouting, God, you must punish. Because God does not hear it. Because of the death of Jesus, the only voice God hears now is the new voice, the voice shouting out, God, you don't need to punish, you've already punished. That's all God hears now. Justice has been done. Now all your sins, past, present and future, were taken on to Jesus and dealt with and paid for and taken care of and he has nothing more against you and as far as your record before him is concerned, there is a delete history button and he has pressed it and it is never coming back. And that's a wonderful thing. Look, this is a tough chapter, okay? It shows us what a mess we're in and it shows us what God has to do about it as well. But I'm really, really thankful that it also sets up the way that God is going to save us from what we deserve. Shall I pray? Heavenly Father, please open our minds to accept the way the world is and the way you feel about our evil so that we can run to Jesus and be covered by that better voice shouting out to you that you no longer need to punish us. Amen.